Andy Sneap is an acclaimed heavy metal producer, songwriter, and musician. Andy has spent his life making records with everyone from Testament to Opeth, Nevermore to Killswitch Engage. He's carved out a reputation for a unique sound built on his fluent understanding of heavy metal's depth, balance, and ferocity. After spending a year co-producing Judas Priest's beloved 2018 record Firepower, he was invited to fill in for Priest guitar legend Glenn Tipton on the Firepower World Tour. Hello, welcome to The Void. We're here with the delightful Andy Sneap. Hey. He is out here with Judas Priest on the Download Festival Tour. What's been the most majestic moments in, the, in your tenure on this world tour? Just some of the size of the shows, really. Mm. The Poland uh, Woodstock Festival we did was, was, was huge. That was, I mean, we lost count how many people had in that because it was a, a free festival, but it's great. You know, I've really sort of just found my feet with it, really. Yeah, yeah. You've, you've definitely absorbed into the, into the world. You know, I'm just mm. filling in, really. Yeah. They, they, they asked me to help out. So it was a case of jumping in and doing what I could do. You know, I'd had a, a year in the studio with them, and like I said, I was doing Accept and Saxon at the same time. So it's been good for me to step away from the studio because it was mentally, I was getting a little bit burnt with that, if I'm honest. Yeah. So to, to be able to step back and still do something this size and, and musical uh, has, yeah. has been great, you know. Um, where it's going to go, I've got no idea. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we, we haven't even discussed it. It's been sort of, Andy, can you do this tour? Can you, can you help us out here? That's how no, it, no yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's, fi that's fine. And you, know? you roll with it and yeah. things will happen the way they happen. Yeah. And, you know. Nice, I mean, Rich is, Rich is amazing. I think he's one of the, 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 the best players out there at the minute. You know, I listen to him play. I'm like, oh, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you remember that? How okay, yeah. do you do that? Magic. Yeah. Um, and obviously Scott's killer. You yeah. know, so, uh, so play with these guys, you know. And um, you know, I look around, there's Rob Alford there, and it's kind of like, this is happening, yeah. you know. <laughs> what was it like recording vocals with him, and what um, made killer. it? Yeah. I mean, he, he'll just keep going till he's, you know, he's dropping dead. I yeah. Mean, I mean, we really put him through it on the record, me and Tom. I mean, Tom, yeah. uh, Tom Allen, who uh, co-produced the album yep. with me, he, he's, he's <laughs> such a character. He's great. Um, and we, we hit it off straight away. I mean, we, we always seem to agree on everything, which was great. Yeah, um, that helps. Yeah. You know, even when we were picking vocal takes, you know, I'd say 95% of the time it was, you know, that one, that one, that one. And when he preferred something, he'd be like, I prefer the phrase in here. And I'd be like, all right, I'll give you that one if I, <laughs> if I can have that one. You know, so it was, it worked out really well. Um, awesome. And Tom's really, really good with uh, harmonies and you know, stacking harmonies up. And, yeah. and, and I didn't realize how much, um, listening to the old albums, um, Tom's influence was there with the backing vocals yeah. and, and the sort of the sound effects and things like that. But working with Rob, yeah, great. I mean, he just, just kept going and kept going. Did yeah. he have rituals? No. 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 Oh, so he's, cup he of tea. Need, he Does, doesn't even warm up. Yeah. <laughs> cup of tea. Doesn't, doesn't warm, warm up. up. No, just straight Jesus. in. Jesus. Like with the live shows, cup of tea, yeah. straight on. Yeah. It's, like, it's, it's, that, it's British heavy metal. It's yeah. always been like this. Yeah. yeah. Is it like, do you all get together in some sort of like evil bunker, like the heavy metal producers? We all, a lot yeah. of us know each other. Yeah. Um, do you bounce stuff between each other? Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. I mean, when we, you know, when I'm mixing stuff, I'll, I'll, I'll fire stuff over to Colin to give me an opinion, you know, yeah. and, and even Mike as well, you yeah. know, we'll, we'll say what, you know, just to get a, it's always good to get a, another pair of ears that you trust. Yeah, you know. totally. I think it was the guys from Napalm. Yeah. It might, might have been. They're great. You British folks make good music. Yeah, Lovely bunch yeah. of people. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're the best. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> when, uh, I think it was a guy from Napalm said to me when, yeah. when, when this is years ago yeah. uh, when I was working with Colin. You know, you, you get your, your balance mix and then you push the guitars by another two dB <laughs> just to just to push get the vibe. There, get the, you know? That's classic get Napalm. The yeah, get the you danger get, back. To that's it. a preset. Yeah, the <laughs> well, napalm preset. Do yeah. you have those? Yeah, it's always like yeah. just you know, right? There's your mix, right? Mm. Guitars up. Yeah. I'm just so into it i'm mm. so into music and so into um you know the the recording and playing side of things it's just it's just what i've always done it's probably why i've i've got to where i am now is because yeah. i've just i just i love it you yeah know? it's what it's what it's the only thing i can do to be honest i left school with no qualifications um i left when i was 15 i left school really yeah why did you leave school I fucking hated Playing it in a band <laughs> yeah i hated it i yeah. couldn't stand it really? I, yeah. yeah i absolutely hated it um, so I, I used to bunk off school and go and see Dave and have guitar <laughs> lessons. And, um, and it worked out. Yeah. I mean, all my school teachers were like, I, I remember we had the work experience guy around at school 
and you know they had the whole class and they said what, what do you want to do Andrew when, when you leave school and I said yeah I want to be a heavy metal guitarist <laughs> and uh, they got me a week's worth of experience at a slaughterhouse up the road <laughs> and I've, I've you know not oh, that's meat. great! Yeah, not eat meat for fifteen years and heavy metal guitar. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> sometimes yeah. education. Yeah. Um, well, you know, they say like Dave Halliday taught you to play guitar. I mean, uh, you yeah, know, I wish Dave was still here to see what I'm, I'm doing now. Yeah. Um, started having lessons with Dave when I was twelve through to seventeen, and it, it was just a, such inspiration for me seeing him in a band doing, you know, what seemed like a big band at the time, which wasn't, you know, yeah. hell, were only sort of a local band that were happening, but. They treat it at such a professional level. They put on a, a show that should be, you know, you could play to a thousand, fifteen hundred people, and it was in a, the back of a pub playing to 150 people. You know, pyro the lot. You know, what we did with Sabbath was so influenced by that because we were local and we all used to go and see these guys. So it, we really took a lot of influence from what they were doing and yeah. injected a bit more sort of thrash into it and had a bit more of a, a different style. Because obviously Martin was. Uh, sort of a gruffer sort of singer and yeah. uh, had his own sort of uh, thing going off with, you know, the idea that the pagan imagery and, and all that. The Dark Sabbath record is amazing. Like yeah. the first one. It's yeah. like, it's, it's ridiculous. You listen to it and you're like, Oh, there's so many colours and flavours. Like, yeah, so, we, I mean, yeah. we, you know, that's the thing with the band's first mm. albums as mm. well, because you are really, you know, you, you've you've had so many years. We 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 probably been together three years before we did that album. Yeah. So we've got three years of learning to play and growing as a band. Yeah. Um, on 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 the first record, and then when you've, you've got your second record to do, you know, you've not really thought about it, and all of a sudden the record label have said, right, guys, we want in the studio in two months' time. Yeah. and stuff and even with Priest there's something about that metal sound and it wasn't around when I was a teenager but there's something about thrash and that kind of metal that traditional British heavy metal sound that makes you feel 13 and like you want to climb out of your bedroom window well yeah I mean it's to me yeah. the, the whole thrash scene was Maiden and Priest taken one step further I mean yeah. you're just in the Slayer I just, they were total priest fans, you know, even the way they were on stage, you know, with Jeff and Carrie. I had two older sisters and no means of, you know, friends that knew what metal was. So, I mean, it, it, the silly thing is I, I probably found metal by hearing Judas Priest on the radio for the stupid song like Living After Midnight or Breaking the Law, you know. Um, I'm just not down with the... Um, the, the commercial stuff. So I get the record thinking, ah, the singer's awesome, you know, the guitar players are awesome. And then you hear rapid fire and, you know, the real metal songs. You know, all the harmonies, the, the, the minor thirds and the fifths, and, 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 you know, it's totally what Maiden were doing, just faster <laughs> and heavier, you know. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I, I know what you mean. I mean, I, you, you can put a record on, you know, if, if I put Mob Rules on or. Yeah you know, a, an early Priest record, and I'm straight back, I'm 13 years old again. It's, it's amazing, yeah. yeah. music does that, you know. It, it really does take you back to mm. when you first heard it, mm. you know. And I think that's why it's like they've been able to survive as a band for 50 years. Mm. Because they've, also, if, they've I, done it for generations. Like. I think, but I think Priest have, you know, been clever where they, they've, they've sort of moulded with the times as well, mm. you know. They haven't sort of stuck within making the same album mm. every time. You know, they, they, yeah, you could say that they've jump trends a little bit but it's kind of they've always obviously because Rob's you know the focal point is, is vocal yeah. um, it, it keeps an identity to the band with with your production and this is maybe a bigger picture question as well you've got like this real talent for having this balance it's almost Moorish like you keep want to keep listening to it I, I think the, a, yeah. um, I mean I think any good producer um, puts their own stamp on it it does, mm. doesn't there's a fine line between sort of colouring it too much, but you're there to sort of bring the character of the band out, but you put your own stamp on it, and that's mm. why people employ you. Yeah. You know, I mean, I can tell what producers have done what records just by listening to it, because it's got a certain character and a certain sheen and mm. style. You know, you get people trying to get your sound, so to speak, but you, you, you just do your thing and how you feel it. You know, you, you can only do what you think is right in, in your head and yeah. how you're hearing it in your head. Yeah. And then obviously being a musician as well, you, you know how to deal with musicians and you know how to um, find the strengths within a band and help, 
you know, with arrangements and, you know, tuning and pitching and, and you know, creativity as well. So really coming from that side of things as a, as a guitarist before I got into this, um, that was a big asset really because I'd worked on the, they say, you know, working on the other side of the glass, yeah. you know, I'd, I'd done albums as a guitar player. Yeah. So I kind of knew what it was like to be in the studio and you know, the red light coming on and, you know, record, oh, yeah. oh shit, you know. <laughs> so yeah, you're this sort of real. sympathetic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why do you think a band like Priest or Sabbath or whatever are so much stronger as players? I mean, some no. great uh, younger guys who, who are just absolute shredders out yeah. there. Um, but I'm not, to be honest, uh, uh, I'm not not anything past 1985, and I'm not that up on it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, you know, I'm, you're right up on that first, yeah. yeah. Hey, well, you know, there's a lot to be said for that era. Let's yeah. let's be I mean, real. I grew, you know, I grew there's up, some questionable things that have happened since then. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, you know, I grew up in the 80s, and I'm a mm. fan of all that metal that was happening in the 80s. Yeah. Um, and even though I've been involved in a lot of stuff, you know, because obviously I didn't start in the business until the late 80s as, yeah. as a guitar player. So all the stuff through, you know up to now there's been newer bands that I've dealt with but as if I'm going to go and pick a record just to listen to you know in the background it'll be I don't know ACDC or it'll be Thin Lizzy or something like yeah. that you know so that's kind of where I'm, I'm my heart's at you know yeah. so to deal with these bands like Accept and Saxon and, and, and Priest it, it, you know and even like the, the thrash bands like Exodus and Testament it's, it's kind of what I was always listening to mm. um, so I just feel a connection with it do you need to have that emotional connection to work yeah, with you, people? You, I've got to, I've got to understand something about it. I mm. mean, even with like the um, Amon and Marth guys, when mm. when they originally approached me, I was kind of like, you know, this is a bit uh, extreme at times. Um, mm. But there was a melody within the music that mm. I, I could get hold of and sort of a groove with it at times that I mm. liked. So I thought, yeah, I can do something with this. So awesome. if this, it hasn't got to be something that appeals to me across the board, but if there's something, I've a connection with it. Yeah. I, and, you know, there's a connection with the guys as well. If I meet them and, you know, I can kind of get the vibe, especially if I've seen them live, I, it helps because you kind of get an idea of what the band's really trying to put across. And there's a lot of times... I've seen a band and I, it just, it's over my head. And I'll say, I'll say to them, you know, I'm, I'm not doing this because it's, I'm not just going to take the money and run because it's, yeah. it, it's not fair on you and I'm, I'm going to be hating life, yeah. you know. How did you meet up with Testament? Like, how did that, because you've been involved with them for a very long time. Yeah, I mean, since about 90, yeah. I think, oh God, 97, 98, something like that. I think it was 98. 20 years. Yeah, wow. thanks, thanks for that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, I knew the Exodus guys. Yeah. Before that, because we'd played Dynamo with them, um, and I met them a couple of times in the UK. And then Testament, I think Eric just approached me when they were doing the um, the Gathering record. Yeah, it was just one of those things. You know, could, do you think you could mix it at our studio, which was a tiny little place um, in Oakland, at Soundwave yeah. Studio, and it was all on ADATs and a Soundcraft Ghost Desk, I think we had, yeah. and uh, we, were, we were doing the mix back onto the ADATs, and all we hired in some outboard gear. And it came out all right for how we did it. Yeah. Um, a lot of people really like that record. I think the song's a killer on it. So we did that, and then we did First Strike, Still Deadly, and we did the re-recordings, and just the Live in London thing, and uh, I've been involved with every album since. Yeah, The yeah. Testament's another one of those bands where you, you know it's them straight away. Yeah. With, with Chuck's vocal as well. You know, again, he's got a very identifiable character to his voice. So you yeah. know straight away, you know, it's... And that's in a way is, is again is that old school thing of the vocalist giving giving the band the character. You know, when you look at these old bands, uh, you know the Saxons, the Maidens, and what have you, you, you know straight away by the singing. Yeah, totally. Who it is, you know, and and, and, and Testament's kind of the next step. You know. On that note, I mean, I would, a friend of mine was talking about this recently about I wish there was singing the way there used to be because I think in the last few years, and I, I know it's it's really prevalent that the either the doomy kind of sound where they bury the vocal real deep in the mix or really tweak it or it's not about vocal technique or it's like, Bleh. not that there's anything wrong with that. That's obviously has a lot of merit in its own way. Yeah. I mean, I think like Chuck Schilding or whatever did it a bit more interestingly than a lot of people, but um, the, do you think maybe some of the problems with metal have to do with, with its connection to people in a commercial sense or whatever have, might have a, a vocal Level like I, I kind of yeah, like, yeah. I, I think yeah. um, not to diminish anyone, but yeah, no, I, I think and I think that you know the the melody um, mm. in, in a vocal. I mean, obviously with the, the the more death metal stuff. Yeah. Um, 
you, you, you know, you've got different styles and a little bit of different pitch you can get in that times, but really yeah. you're working with the timing more than anything. Ah, it's, all, it's almost like a, a, a rap type mm. thing where you, 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 the, you get the hook out the timing of the vocal. Yeah. Um, as opposed to any sort of melody where obviously you've, yeah, with, right. with, with melody you've got the, the extra element to it. But and I think, you know, yeah. it's just different genres really. Yeah. I mean, I, it's surprising how big the whole, um, that more death style has got and how big it's got. Yeah. Where to me, I, I, you know, when the whole death metal scene was starting, um, yeah. I, 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 I almost didn't pick up on that because the thrash thing was dying out by then. Yeah. Um, and I wasn't playing so much then, I was getting more into production. So when the, in the early 90s, when the whole death metal thing was coming up, I was kind of switched off from it a little bit, you know. So um, when the whole black metal scene and the, the death metal type stuff started coming out, mm. I was sort of in a different place headwise. So yeah. I always joke I'm in my own little sort of heavy metal bubble. You know, I mean, yeah. uh, <laughs> you used to be Kerrang Land in the 80s, you know. It yeah. was, um, you know, because you, you wake up in the morning, the first thing you're thinking about is work and you know, music and, you know, with me doing the, the priesting at the moment, I'm thinking about riffs, you know, I've got riffs going through my head all the time. So, um, yeah, it, it, you know, you, you do base your, your life around it, you know, yeah. it really is 100% um, heavy metal, really. Yeah, well, that's know? good. Yeah. What a great life. That's all right. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty good. Yeah, I'm not arguing. Is it more fun recording through a Kemper or your, like, vintage collection of stuff? Um, the it can be creative recording through doing the camper stuff yeah. because you can obviously um it's a tool you know you, yeah. you can switch between sounds if you've got a clean idea you want to put down go straight to mm -hmm. good clean sound blah 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 blah. um i still love all my old gear because it's fun with yeah. the old amps you What's know? Your, what are your favorites like what are oh, your, my old your best friends yeah uh, i've got you know the jam peas and the 800s yeah. you know great i mean for metal you know marshall's especially for this sort of stuff you know is if you're in regular tuning um playing classic metal then i, I don't think you can go far wrong with the jsm 800 you know? yeah it's pretty so, that's yeah. good what was it like making um megadeth endgame you know me and dave got on yeah. great with it really? actually yeah. yeah yeah i mean it was it was hard work at times but we, i mean it took five months and, and it was a lot of time away from home because i was down in san diego yeah um down there and it was a lot of air miles actually as well but um no, it was all right. I mean, it, it, I got on with, with Sean Drover really well, the drummer. Um, yeah. So me and Sean were having a good time out there. You know, it was one of those albums where the songs were pieced together a little bit because mm. we were finding ideas from different places and old tapes. And um, there wasn't really a situation where it was the jam, uh, sort of a band jamming the ideas. Mm. But um, I, I, think we, I think we did pretty well on that. I think yeah. it put the band, you know, with United Abominations and Endgame, yeah. we, it put the band back on track a little bit. So... Yeah, it was good. It's good. Yeah. It's a good And he was all right. Time. Yeah. Yeah. Dave's got, um, you know. A powerful character. Yeah, that's yeah. the best way of putting it. But yeah. it, it, was, it was fine. And uh, yeah. it was, you know, it was interesting because him and Chris were very different players. Um, Chris mm. was very methodical and, you know, um, had everything worked out. And Dave would come in and he'd just be like, yeah, yeah, just, yeah, but it, it was Dave straight away as soon as he started playing. Well, that's what... Was, Matt, that's the character yeah. thing I'm on about. Was that yeah. Matt Pike from High on Fire? He's like, you know, mm. you can hear all the riffs that um, that he wrote on um, all the Metallica songs. Like, you, you can hear Dave in, in so much of that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. It's, it's no, the, I think everyone's got their own place. I mean, yeah. I, I always say the drummer is a, a backbone of the band, yeah. you know, because... Uh, if you've got a bad drummer, then you, you, it's always it's going to affect everyone in the band, you know. Yeah. So the, the 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 character of the drumming really affects a band, I think. So can you be a good heavy metal band with a bad drummer? Yeah, uh, I know you, you can. You can make it work in the studio now, yeah. but um, I, I think it will it will always weaken the band if the yeah. you know if the drummer's not not up to par. Yeah. yeah. What's been the hardest record you've worked on? Ooh, I'd say probably Dead Heart in a Dead World by Nevermore. Yeah? Yeah. You just weren't feeling it? No, I was feeling it. <laughs> I was feeling it. it just was hard. Just, yeah, yeah, there was a lot of drinking on that record. Um, yeah. And we got the results in the end, but it was difficult. Yeah. You know, um, so, but it came out great. Yeah. You know, um, so, it, it, mm. you know, it, it was one of those that, by the time we finished it, it was like, what have we got here? And yeah. it wasn't until the review started coming in that it was like, oh, yeah, all right, we, we, yeah, we, we did okay. Yeah, yeah, we did fine, yeah. Um, but yeah, it was, it was, that was a tough one. 
Yeah. Yeah. I suppose because you are kind of going into war a bit, like, you know, bunkering down. Like, you, that's a pretty intimate relationship you're kind of having with these people. Yeah, like, and if, you, if you've you know, never met them before, um, mm. which, I mean, that was the first album I'd, I'd done Does with those guys. Does that happen a lot? Mm. It, it, can, it can be kind of weird sort of getting to know people, um, you know, because like I said, you soon start noticing the characters within the band and when the, if there's a bit of friction there, yeah. you know. Um, so, you know, you start seeing how things, you know, if there's a split within a band, I'm not saying that there was with those guys, but, I'm, you know, yeah. if there is, you know, you soon start seeing those sort of things and, you know, Nothing. there'll be one side off talking about another side, you know, it, it's... Yeah, so you have to sort of try and be diplomatic and mm. find a middle ground. You it's know. like but wildly sensitive people in groups. I mm. mean, it's the, and you know, it must have been a nice transition as well to kind of go into production and still making that without the challenges of being a band. Yeah, yeah I mean, like, it's, yeah, I mean, I was ready to yeah. sort of go out, on, on, you know, on my own when I started doing production, and by yeah. the time I was working in America in '96. Yeah. Um, I could see that I, it's not like you're having to rely on anyone else. Mm. You know, when you're in a band, you, you're always going as fast as the slowest member. What did like growing up in the tape trading scene and stuff? What was that like? Was were you like, involved in that? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I mean, all, I, the, all, yeah. The, all the Sabbath stuff. We, yeah. we, I was trading tapes with guys all over yeah. the world. You know, the whole um, the way that you used to build a, a band's fan club was just through doing newsletters and uh, you and know cassettes. And, stuff, and yeah. I used to spend days just sat there, you know, doing tapes and sending them out. Yeah. You know, doing fanzines. You know, I mean, it's, this is all pre-internet stuff, so it was the only way to get the the name mm. of the band out there. You know, I mean, Napalm did the A side of Scum before they did before they before it became a proper album. So I just sent it to everybody around the world, along with the drummer and a few other people did as well. So we we're in part responsible, I think, a little bit for Napalm reaching out, and in turn, those bands who loved it reached out to us, and so we got terrorizer demos or whoever, you know. At any point, I'd be getting records from Japan and stuff from. Say the America or tapes from New York, and you know the, these bands were like obviously they were like in their garages and just doing their own thing. And there wasn't it's not like now, you know they were like coming up. I mean I'm saying not saying bands don't come up with their own ideas, but there's like blueprints around. Oh, yeah. And there's a lot of blueprints around. There's a lot of like well you know if you want to learn how to blast, you go and check this video out and they'll show you. But back then you didn't have that. You had to work that out yourself. You know I used to send tapes off to all these fanzines and. Um, you used to judge the quality of the, you know, this fanzine feels alright, they can have a tape. But that's kind of cool, like it's, it's I think the internet, what, at first like, oh this is, it's all going to be great and it's, you know, everyone can get everyone. And it's like, there's, there's definitely like, cha like channels pushing yeah, things I, I call through. it white noise, like, it, yeah. it, it, you know, there's a lot of um, excess stuff out there and that you've got to know where to look for things, mm. you know. Yeah. yeah, and it's the same with, you know, all these, the, the people that criticise you online as well. Mm. You know, it's just, it's just, ah, it's, it's like you've just got to well, focus, you anyone know. Anyone who's having a good time in their life and doing something interesting and like mm. putting energy into their life being good mm. is not going to write a negative comment on the internet. No. They're just not. in any band there's going to be um, a bit of conflict and a bit of push and pull yeah. you know because people have got different ideas and, okay. and there's always going to be people that are, are putting more time in than other people yeah. you know um, it, it's just the nature of it you know people have got lives and mm. other commitments you know so yeah. we're all on a continuum yeah and, and you know it's always going to be that I've always put 100% into the music and 100% into any band that I've been in yeah. um, because I've been in a life <laughs> <laughs> leave the house no exactly like no, <laughs> no I'll, I'll be in the dressing gown yeah. you know Into it, yeah four, four o'clock yeah. in the morning yeah. like say you're queuing a hi hat yeah. keeping me awake <laughs> stay metal forever and keep keep watching the void yeah.